عليكم السلام ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم This is the fourth fiqh lesson just for those who follow by recording last week there was no lesson so this is the fourth the fourth lesson of fiqh there was one or two lessons in purification but we didn't record it we start with salah so this is the fourth lesson in this lesson we'll try to do two things first thing is some dislike actions in salah what call in fiqh makruhatu salah and then after that we'll go to kitab at-tatawwu the nafl the nawafil the sunan dislike actions we talk before that there's some certain actions if you do it in salah your salah became invalid this is called mubtilat make the salah invalid like if you eat or drink during the salah or if you talk not in the purpose of salah or if you are certain that your wudu is invalid so your salah become invalid then that's the actions which is make salah invalid or a lot of movements which it's not, not necessary today we talk about something else something if you do your salah is valid however it's dislike the first thing is to look right or left in salah or raise your eyes up that's makruh because in salah you talk to your lord you should focus on your salah prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said about those people who raise their eyes in salah ma balu aqwamin yarfa'una absarahum ila as-sama layantahunna aw layasrifanna allah absarahum what a, what's wrong with some people who raise their eyes to the sky during the salah if they don't i mean stop this action may allah took their insights so because this is unrespectful be careful here to look at the sky to contemplate outside of salah this is good thing prophet sallam always used to look at the sky and reflect but we are here talking about during salah someone is in salah and you look like this that's dislike second or to look left or right which is Khushu' is the most important thing in your salah. So some people, when they pray, they look everywhere. If there is decoration in the mosque, they will go to details. They will look at everything. They will look at the new watch of his neighbor, at the shoes of us, as the clothes of his neighbor. Maybe he will go up. Oh, this first time I realized that the roof is like this. All of these things you have to focus either look at the place of sujood or look in front of you either these two places either in front of you or in the place of sujood but not left prophet sallam said about looking left or right inma dhalika ikhtilasun yakhtalisuhu al-'abd shaytan min al-'abd that's a type of deception of shaytan he want you to, he want to disrupt you in salah another also think is when you play with your fingers some people they crock their fingers during salah for example or make their fingers together in salah locking together this is also dislike in salah in salah also if you have feeling that you have to you feel sleepy, you yawn in salah. Some people, they always like this. That's something nature. But Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you have to stop it as much as you can during salah. As much as you can. Another thing in makruhatu salah is when you come to sujood, 
we mentioned before that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, we, when you go to sujood, there is seven joints should touch the ground. Your knees, your feet, your hands, and your nose and forehead. Be careful, there's something dislike in sujood, that when your elbow touch the ground, when you go to sujood, pay attention that your elbow should be not touching the ground. Don't make like this. If you pray alone, try to make it widely. If you pray with jama'ah just as much, but don't touch the ground. That's, that's makruh fi salah. Also, closing your eyes during the salah is makruh. There's no hadith, authentic hadith about this, but all fuqaha, they say this is dislike. There's some hadith, this is like this, this is all not authentic. However, it's makruh. What if I close my eyes, I will focus more. Some scholars discuss this mas'ala. Al-Izz ibn Abd al-Salam from al-Shafi'iyya in his fatawa. Ibn al-Qayyim in al-Hadi in Zad al-Ma'ad. They said, in general, try not to close your eyes. But sometimes during salah, if you feel that you are in need in that, for example, you see some decorations or some people go there and there, yes, in that situation, you can close your eyes. Because the main purpose of salah is khushu'. But don't make it as a habit that from the beginning to the end, you close your eyes. But just if it's necessary. That's some of... Also, min makruhati salah is to recite Quran in ruku' or sujood position. For example, if Imam go in a long sujood, you start to recite in Quran. That's dislike. Prophet said, don't recite Quran during sujood or ruku' position. In ruku', just praising Allah and in sujood, make dua. So that's some of the famous makruhatu salah which is this like and it's all is in one purpose to make you focus in salah that's why prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made some ahadith he says some ahadith the purpose of all this ahadith is to told us khushu' is the most important thing in salah salah is not just actions go to ruku' and sujood and say some things Salah is about your heart. When your heart focus on salah, this is the proper salah. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, some people, they completed their salah, and how many percent of this salah is raised, is just 10%, sometimes 20%, 50%, 90%, depend to your khushu', depend to your focus, depend how much you focus on that salah. So always ask yourself after every single salah, how many percent did the angels write down for me? How many percent? It depends to your khushu'a. They narrated that one time, an uh, imam in Salatul Dhuhr, he prayed lead salah, and he made three rak'ah. So no one noticed that except one businessman. Usually he's not that level of religious man. He's just famous as business and so he said, Subhanallah, the only him. Subhanallah. And after salah, how do you know that is three rak'ah and you are very certain? I said, because I have four shops and every single rak'ah I count for the one shop. So you just, I made three counting of three, calculating of three shops. There's one left. So try to focus on your salah. Very, very important. Prophet Sallallahu said, if you want to go to the masjid of, or you want to perform salah, and suddenly your wife or your mom set the table for the food, Prophet Sallallahu said, eat the food first and then pray. What's the purpose behind that? Because when you pray, Maybe your mind is still there with the food. It means the, 
The lesson here is khushu' is the most important. Prophet ﷺ told us, if you are in necessary need to the toilet, don't pray. Go and fulfill your need first and then come to pray. What does that mean? Again, to pray with khushu'. Prophet Sallallahu said to the Arab in that time when the Arabia is very hot, if there is dhuhr and there is too much hot, delay the dhuhr. Nearly to the close to the asr. Why? Because if they pray that time in that so hot environment, maybe there will be no khushu'. Again, khushu', khushu' again. All this hadith is just to emphasize the importance of khushu'. We can now derive some other ahkam depend to this hadith. For example, for example, if you ex expect phone call, don't enter the prayer. It's very important call and during that your mind will be distracted. Put your phone silent and focus on your salah. Or have the meeting first till you finish that meeting. If it's important or have a deadline or then go to salah. That's why when you come to salah in the mosque, try to make your mobile phone silent. Just to focus. Focus on salah. If uh, a mother is in, at home and she is cooking and the food is on the oven, for example, should make sure that there's nothing will distract her about salah. Focus. If you pray in a place, there is a lot of decorations, try to make a place which help you to focus. Prophet Wasallam one day, a one companion gave him, gave him a, a nice cloth as a gift. But that cloth had a lot of colors. So Prophet Wasallam, he removed it and say, I don't want this. This is distract me from salah, from khushu'a. All this ahadith, it's just khushu' is the most important. That's why it's very important before we leave this point to buy a small book or listen to some videos about khushu'. Many scholars, they wrote a lot of kutub just about how can we make our best salah. How can we pray in the best, perfect manner? A lot of books over there to told you first for example wudu is the first step in khushu' when you perform wudu make sure that perform spiritual wudu and physical wudu physical wudu is what majority of muslims they do they wash their hands they wash their face their arms but spiritual wudu is when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when you wash your face Sincerely, Allah will forgive for you every single sin that you look by your eyes. Every single sin that you do by your hands, by your feet. If you remember this in every single wudu, then this washing is just not, you wash your face physically and your soul spiritually. That's the first step in khushu'. And when you come to perform salah, Every salah stand start with standing, not sitting, unless you are ill. Why start with standing to remind you that in the day of judgment, you will stand in front of your Lord. And the first question he will ask you, how was your salah? So this standing here remind us of that standing, long standing in the day of judgment. Try to perfect this standing, then the, that standing will be very easy. May Allah make it easy for all of us. Then when you say Allahu Akbar, this action, which all madahib agree with this, Allahu Akbar. It's not like this Allahu Akbar. Some scholars say it's like you throw the all thoughts of dunya behind you. Allahu Akbar. And then just Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater. It's not Allahul Akbar. Allahul Akbar literally meaning Allah is the greatest. It's Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater. 
Greater than what? Why it's greater here in salah every single action? It means every single thought come to your mind. Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater than what you thought. Allah is greater than every single action. Then try to learn some hadith which is Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to say some words before qira'a which is called dua al-istiftah. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik wa tabarak asmuk wa ta'ala jadduk wa la ilaha ghayruk. Try to know the meaning because this praising of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala get you in the mood of salah. Then when you start Fatiha, think about every single ayah. What does Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen mean? What comes to your mind when you say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen? What comes to your mind when you say Ihdina Sirat Al Mustaqim? All these actions. Ruku' why it's not like is like this? Sujood is like this. In dunya, when someone have a special meeting with a president or king or queen or whatever, they came to the palace and they try to, the first thing they do, they bow to show their respect. After that, they try to praise the king. Lillahi al ala this ruku' is full of bowing. And we say, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim. This is the Azim one. Not all these false kings. This is the Azim. After that, Allahu Liman Hamida. Now Allah hearing is hearing your praising. And after the, when they came to palace, they want to ask something. You want to ask Allah Taala go to prostration. Go to sujood. Put the best part of your body on the ground to show your humility. Oh Allah, I'm your slave. I'm your servant. I'm nothing without you. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. And start mention what do you need. So when you think about this, it may be, there's a lot of books about this. And in the end, when you say Assalamu Alaikum, why you say Assalamu Alaikum? Usually we say when we meet someone, when we come to home, when we come to the work, it means you was in a special journey. You was not here in this dunya. So when you say Assalamu Alaikum, you are coming back now to the normal dunya. Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullah salam. And immediately you say, Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Which is the most, some people say Allahu Akbar after that, which is some madahib. But the hadith which is mentioned Allahu Akbar in Abu Dawood, the strongest opinion is not authentic. So the strongest opinion is to say straight away, Astaghfirullah, not Allahu Akbar. Astaghfirullah, why? You was in salah. It means, oh Allah, whatever I do for the sake of you is nothing compared to your haqq. If I devote all my life, if I spend all my time just prostrating for you, it's nothing compared to your haqq, compared to your favors, compared to your ni'am. Astaghfirullah, forgive me for this shortness. So that's the khushu. So this is some dislike actions in salah. After that, we'll move to kitab tatawwa which is nawafil. But before that, we can open the questions just for anything dislike actions before we move. Yes. Eight. Ah. Very good question. He said, you better to eat. I said, it's if the food is on the table. Prophet Sallam said that. Okay? Yes. Okay, what about Ramadan? If someone is just adhan and you, some masajid, they just, many, majority of men, they pray in the mosque and they just have three dates and they pray. Can I pray at home in Ramadan during with my family? Yes. There's no problem at all with that. Especially in Ramadan, some people be very hungry. 
So if you pray at home, Salatul Maghrib, and have your iftar with your family, it's okay. It's fine, absolutely fine. The purpose here is focus on salah. If you are hungry, then take your time. Not take your time, one hour <laughs> waiting for sambusa. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes. Very good question. If there is no khushu' in prayer, does prayer still count? As Prophet Sam said, it depends. If there is no, if zero percentage, it counts that you fulfill the fard, but there is no reward at all. Reward is depend to the khushu'. If it's 10%, you have 10%. But fard is fulfilled, that's something else. Absolutely, yeah. The people in Gaza is, have more fiqh than us. We are masakin here. So don't ask me about those people. This is better than me. Okay. Yes. No. Um, Sheikh, you mentioned the Christmas flag. You, uh, you said that you know, That's right. How long did you ask? Very good question. What about if I say a dua? which is part of Quran during sujood. That's fine. Because your intention here is the dua itself, not to recite. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَ وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَ وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِيقْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَابِ Which is part from Quran, but your intention is as a dua, not as a recitation. Yes. To? But yes, if you are in haram, are you allowed to look at Kaaba? I said before, you have two choices. You can look at your place of sujood or look in front of you. Both is okay. Even in Kaaba or outside Kaaba, even in Masjid al Furqan, you, you can look in front of you. Or in the place of sujood, both is okay. If you look at Kaaba, absolutely fine. Yes. Okay, this is, we talk about this in, before recording, in purification. Is it, if you are bleeding, can you pray? Okay, again, we don't talk about another bleeding. Okay, if you are a normal bleeding, yes, bleeding you have. If the bleeding is just, you can stop the bleeding by tissue, for example, and that's fine, you can continue the salah this except in Hanafi Madhab. In Hanafi Madhab, bleeding, and in one opinion, strong opinion in Hanbali Madhab, bleeding is your wudu is invalid became. In Hanafi Madhab, and one big riwayah in Madhab. In Hanafi and Hanbali, in one riwayah. But I mean, the other scholars, they bleeding is not related to the wudu. If it's during salah, and you follow this Madhab, if it's very, you can stop it, that's fine. If you can't, then you have to stop your salah and go and wash this bleeding. Yeah. Yes. Good, good question. When did you put your hand when you say Allahu Akbar? There is two positions, which is both in hadith either here or here. So some scholars say here, because this is another hadith, another hadith here. Some scholars say, or between them. So you can say this, or you can say this, but not like this, or like this. Just here, ears, or your shoulders. Yes. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. You can look to, in front of you or to the sujood, yes. If you are what? Home. Home. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, if you are at home and you're not facing Kaaba, but you're facing Qibla, I suppose. Okay, if you just facing Qibla, he asked if he go to Umrah and he facing Kaaba, can he look at Kaaba? But if you are at home, already there's no Kaaba. Unless you have Kaaba at home. Do you have Kaaba at home? No, okay. Just look at Qibla. How old are you? Eight, mashallah. Okay, just look at Qibla. Okay. So, yes, Hamidullah. Can you touch your ears when you do Allahu Akbar? You can, but there is no hadith that you it's recommend to do it. Some people do this. It's okay also. We talk about this before. It's better not to, to say it. But if you say it, salah is valid also. Okay. الله أكبر. آه. يس لقمان. Okay, لقمان, ten years old, ask if you are ten. Nine? Eight. eight, sorry, sorry. Luqman is eight years old. If someone, he asks someone is in haram and he facing Kaaba, some people who made tawaf sometimes push you and you have to do your best, Luqman. Try to pray in a place no one will distract you. Okay, yes, last question. Yes. Sorry? Okay, what if you are in haram and you praying sunnah, for example, and people, they pass in front of you? Okay, Prophet ﷺ told us, this is also in khushu'ah, if you want to pray, pray in a place that no one will distract you, no one will pass in front of you. Try to have a sutra, something like this, can you, can you show me this? So something called sutra, which is like this, for example, put this in front of you, no one distract you. What if you are in haram? In haram, Allah said, ittaqullaha mastata'atum. You can't do anything. You can't prevent people because they want to pass. There's no way to do also. So it just try to focus on your salah. So they can pass in front of you, just try to focus. Yes. What if the women uh, pass in front of you? Okay, some people, because of the hadith, يَقْطَعُ الصَّلَاةِ الرَّجُلِ If the woman go in pass of you, cut your salah. The strongest opinion, which is the majority, is this means it's cut your khushu' not your salah. It doesn't mean your salah is invalid, no. Salah is valid if anything go past in front of you. It's still valid. But he talked because many women maybe this distract you. So you have a lack of khushu'. That's the meaning of hadith. Naam. The people what? Say it again. are running okay the people who run who came late and they run run to catch the salah that's dislike also that's not a good thing prophet sallallahu alaihi said if you come to the masjid come with the tranquility with sakina with calmness and if one rak'a two rak'a three rak'a you you miss that's your qadr but don't come Hurry up, running to catch the rak'ah. That's one of dislike actions, absolutely. Have a sakina. Yes.
Okay, he, he said that if someone is in Mecca and someone push you for maybe a reason to do something in haram or clean that place, what about my salah? If they push you away from that place, if it's just one meter, two meters, even three meters, you can continue your salah. If it's something very far, then you have to. May Allah help you, inshallah. Okay. Yes. Naam, tafadal. Very good question. Sutra. If I pray here and someone there pass, that's not my business. That's not my business. My business is here. Between me and my sujood. Just one meter. That's my business. If something far away, that's not my business. I can't control the masjid. Yeah. But, um, I, I usually, uh, in school, uh, at lunch, yeah, I, I usually pray in, in a place. But mm. at, at my school, they start, they start playing football. And that's where I do you like football? Yeah. Oh, that's big distraction. <laughs> okay, and then, so can you? How do I become? How do I focus? I focus. Okay. Ten years old. Twelve. Twelve. Sorry. Okay. Ammar is twelve years old. He said, "I pray Zuhur at school, in a break, lunch break, and my friends they play football, and I love football." So this distract me. How can I focus? Okay. <laughs> salah, ha, ha, how long took Salah Salah to Lord? How long it will take? Five to ten minutes. That's fine. Just make sabr. Your Salah, Allah will reward you, inshallah. Make you, inshallah, a good player. So just focus in your Salah, inshallah. Yes. In, okay. If someone... Pa walk or distract you or pass in front of you, this is for him, this is, he did something wrong totally. That's it. He, I mean, he's sinful in this. I mean, Sagair al Yes. Unless he is far, that's, that's not your business. That's okay. Or he is in hurry also. Maybe he has something necessary. All this ahadith is just to warn us about this. So if someone go in front of him, this is definitely haram. Unless he is in hurry, if he has something urgently, that's okay then. Or if he is far, far away, that's no problem also. But should be very careful about this. Don't come across someone who is praying. However, some people, when they pray sunnah, they went to the end of the mosque with no sutra. That's their problem. So in the end of the mosque, and they want people to stop. That's not fair. If this is the case, the people, they have to pass then. So try to choose appropriate place. Yes? Just smiling, or smiling is, your salah is still valid. But if you're laughing, and there's a voice after that laughing, this is invalid. However, don't smile. Okay. Yes? Okay. When you're wearing a hat, for example, do you have to show your forehead if you prostrate like this? If you do that, your salah is valid, absolutely. But it's better to show your forehead. But your salah is valid. Like when you wear a, a socks in your feet. So salah is valid, but it's better to show your forehead. Yes? Ah. Uh, 
Ah, very good, very good, very good point. Very good. Very good point, very good point. So some people, when they are following the imam, they are ma'moom, the one who pray in behind, behind the imam. He pray quick. He try sometimes do actions before the imam. This is haram. Not just makro. This is haram. You can't make any action before imam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized this so much. Because إِنَّمَا جُعِلَ الْإِمَامُ لِيُؤْتَمَّ imam is a leader. And even the fuqaha discuss when if you go before imam, is your salah valid or not valid? They say if you are before imam with two actions, your salah is invalid. For example, if imam is in ruku' and you stand and go to sujood and he's still in ruku', your salah is invalid. They say if just one action, this is haram, but your salah is still valid. Yes. Wait, the imam is so slow. The imam who leads Jumu'ah. Jama'ah is the imam. Yes. Anyone who is imam pray very slow. Salah very slow. Fard, okay. Yeah, sunnah sometimes you can do it very, you can do it not slow. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for example, when he pray sunnah al-fajr, the two rak'ah before fajr, Aisha said, I don't know if he recite Fatiha even. <laughs> Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi sunnah is not like fard. Fard, you have to make it perfect. Sunnah sometimes, if you have, for example, one minute before iqama, you can do too quick I said before that if you can say Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la one time, your salah is valid then. It's not like fard. Yes? Okay, we talk about this before. If the Imam recites Surah Al-Fatiha, don't recite with him during Fatiha. But when he finished Fatiha, if you follow a method that you have to, like Shafi'i, yes. Then after Fatiha, you start your Fatiha. But some, some Madahib, they don't, you don't have even to recite. Yeah. If you catch Ruku' with Imam. Yes. Yes. In majority of scholars, if you catch the Ruku' with Imam, your Raka'ah is valid, even if you don't read Surah Al-Fatiha. Because the, the point here is Imam can carry a lot of things in behalf of you. That's the importance of Jama'ah. If you made a lot of mistakes during Salah, you don't have to make sujood al sahu Imam is carry all your faults. That's why A'imma Masakin. They have to bear, hold a lot of things. Okay. Yes. We talk about this before. We, yeah. We said yes. In Madhab al Hanabila, you can say, yeah. Yeah, you can. Yes. In Haram. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, if you are in haram and you completed your seven tawaf and you want to pray that two rak'ah behind the maqam Ibrahim, sometimes you don't find any place, so you have to pray next to woman or woman sometimes in front of you. Or sometimes you start your salah and some woman come and pray in front of you. That's fine, because this is necessary. It's necessary, you, you don't have option. 
There is a big rules in Sharia. If it's ittaqullaha ma istata'tum. If anything necessary, then that's exception. If you are in a normal, no, but if something like this, especially in haram. However, maqamu Ibrahim, you can pray any place. Some people, they thought they have to pray immediately next to the maqam. No. Just any place, which is maqam in front of you, even even half mile, but you're still in haram. So try to pray in a place you are sure that no one will distract you. Yes? Um, walking in between Jama'ah in front of people, is that something that you want to avoid? Or? Okay, if, if Jama'ah is there and you came late and you found a gap far away, can you walk in between Sufuf, between the lines? Yes, you can walk. This is permissible. Because the sutra here is just for Imam. If there is any jama'ah, the sutra of jama'ah is only the sutra of Imam. But the ma'mumin, they don't have sutra. Their sutra is the sutra of Imam. So you can do it. Ibn Abbas did it in Mina. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's good to pray with them. Yes. If you pray at workplace and you came to the mosque and you already pray Isha, it's highly recommended to pray with them and it becomes sunnah for you. Prophet ﷺ, when he was in Mina in Hajjatul Wada', he completed the Salatul Fajr. And when he turned his face to the people, he found two people in the end of the mosque. They said, come here. Why you don't pray with us? They said, we prayed in our tents in Mina. Because this is Hujjaj, you can pray anywhere. He said, that's fine. But if you pray at home and you come to the mosque, pray with us. It counts as a nafila for you. Why Islam doesn't want that picture, which is jama'ah here and some people sitting, separating, because maybe someone's, what's going on? You understand? That's not a good picture, yeah. Yes, what's your name? Huh? Akram. Akram, eight years old. Is that right? Okay. Go on, Akram. He slip what? Water. Slip water on you. <laughs> Is his older brother or younger brother? Any. Oh no, it depends. If he's younger, you have to take revenge. <laughs> if it's older, mention to your parents. <laughs> okay, Akram is praying and one of his brothers slip water on him. Try to be patient. Don't cut your salah. Finish your salah and then <laughs> tell your parents. If he, if he, if you fall, okay. If you fall, then <laughs> <laughs> if he do it a lot of times, you have to take your revenge, Akram. Then he will never do it. If he's your old brother and your parents, let him to do that. Your old brother, don't do anything to your old brother. Ah, when they, your parents came, mention that to him. But don't do anything to your older brother. Be careful. Okay. Yes. You don't have water at all. Okay. Okay, we told, we, we mentioned before that there's some cases you can go to tayammum. Do you know what is tayammum? You can go to the sand and put your hands instead of wudu. The first 
case study is if you don't have water at all, you can go then to Tayammum. The second one, you have water, but if you use it, it may raise your illness or it may cause problem to you. That's also another thing also. Or the third case, if you have water, but you have very little just for your drinking. In these cases, you can go to Tayammum. How, there's two, two, two options. The first one is to do, touch the sands, Bismillah, and then straight away your face, and then your hands. That's it. Bismillah, face, and hands. The second method is touch your hand, touch the ground, and then face, and another touch, and then here. Both is, is valid. Yeah. Uh, what is the ruling if somebody uh, uh, vomiting in prayer? For, uh, vomiting, okay. If someone vomiting in prayer, he have to cut his prayer and go and clean himself. Can he continue after that? That's two opinions. If it's in Hanaf, yes. If it's in the majority, he can't. But you, you have to cut your, your salah. You have to go and wash yourself. Because vomiting, this is not impure. You have to cut your salah and go to wash it. Uh, and then repeat the wudu. No. Oh, wudu still it doesn't relate it to wudu. Oh. It's related to your salah. No connection between vomiting and wudu at all. No at all. Yes. Very good. If you, if you pray in a very small room for prayer, at hospital, at university, workplace, can the imam stand in the middle? Yes, that's better. Then he can, you can, you can have a big jama'ah. Yes, imam can stand in the middle if it's necessary. Yes. Not in front. Actually, the Imam is here. Okay. The building is like hell shell. So this hell is like, a, like for the other people praying here, why the Imam is here. Yeah, yeah. It, it's again, all this is necessary. It's for necessity. If the building is in a shape where we can't, we can't change the building, but so we do what, what we can do. Taqullaha mistata'atum. That's the first point. The second point, regard to Masjid al furqani you say Imam is like this. The best solution is to have a good funding and build a new mosque for Al Furqan, which is very big and a huge mosque. <laughs> That's the best solution. Yes. No, we mentioned in the last lesson that sujood al sahu. You know sujood al sahu. Yes, that's two prostrations which you do to recover something missing in Salah. We said that there is three reasons for that. Either you add something, or you miss something, or you are in doubt of something. That's the third case now. You are not sure if you pray three rak'ah or four rak'ah. Go to three rak'ah. Go to less, to something you are certain. And pray the fourth rak'ah, and when you finish, go make two sajda, which is called sujood al sahu but don't repeat Salah from the beginning. Never. Don't do it. There's always fixing in Salah, but don't repeat it from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, good question. If sometimes you pray, you miss Salah, and you now want to pray that salah at home, for example. You start praying, and in the first rak'ah you realize that there is no khushu' at all. Zero. Can you make it from the start? In this case, you can do it. 
However, don't make it as a habit. If sometimes, yes, start from the beginning and try to make khushu'a, but don't make it as a habit. Because this is lead to what we call waswas. Every time, no, I'll start again, I'll start again, I'll start again. If sometimes, occasionally, yes, you can do it. Naam. Like Ramag. Very good. He said, if I'm driving, usually when he's driving, when Maghrib come, he straight away stop the car and pray on time. This time it's raining heavily, heavy raining. Can I delay the Maghrib to pray with Isha? Yes. In this case, immediately when you realize you can't pray Maghrib, which is very short time, when you realize you can't pray time, Maghrib on time, made niyyah from the beginning of time, I will combine Maghrib and Isha late. Niyyah here is very important. If you don't make niyyah, you miss this, it becomes qada. So straight away, oh, I can't do Maghrib for this reason. I will combine it with Isha late, insha'Allah. Yes, you can do it. Isa. Mashallah alayk. In that situation, is it better to pray in the car when you're sitting down? Pray in the car is a new mas'ala nowadays. Some scholars say, which is more important to pray on time or to pray salah with the full arkan, which is standing is the first rukun of salah. So there's two opinions in modern scholars. In this case, I prefer to delay Maghrib and pray it with Isha, combine them, and not go to sitting. Because you have now, Maghrib is just for a short time and you can combine it. But if you pray, follow this, yes. That some scholars say. It's a mas'ala called which is more important of shuruat al-salah. Is it a time or arkan? Huh. Um, is, it, is it only maghrib and isha you can join? Or what, what about if you're in if that situation? No, you can join maghrib al-isha or dhuhr and asr. However, maghrib because it's a very short time, not like dhuhr. Ah, okay. Can you join Asr and Maghrib? No, you can't join Asr and Maghrib. But in that situation, either you pray on sitting, Madhab Sheikh Isa, or you can delete it because that's what you can do. Okay. Akram, what do you want to ask about? You have a lot of questions today, Akram. Come here, come here. You, you have to ask this question here in the microphone. All the audience, they want to see Akram. Come here. Stand up here. This is Mr. Akram. Bismillah. Sheikh Akram. So, um, what if you're in a car and you have space to pray? Can you speak pray? Here, speak here. So, what if you're in the car and you have space to pray? Can you pray inside the car? Okay. What if you have space in the car? What kind of car do you own? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, do you, have a, do you have a space to stand in the car? Me, yeah, but... Are you... Okay, that's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very nice question. Jazakallah khair, Akram. Akram said he can stand in the car. That's fine. If you can stand, that's halas. You solve the problem. No, your mom is different. But if you can stand in the car, halas. You solve the problem. In, in, no, but, but usually the car is clean, Akram. <laughs> then you have to wait, inshallah, till you come to home. Yes.
you have lack of focus on salah. Just if you don't read any book or listen to any video about this, you have to watch video. Really, it really helps. It really helps. I remember a book. I've read a book long time ago, maybe 30 years ago. I still remember the book, which is the author is Lady Ruqayya Muharib. كيف تخشعين في الصلاة? How can you make focus on salah? This book affect me a lot. Long time ago. Sometimes you read a book or you watch one video about khushu. It helps a lot. Another thing, if you always have this problem, it means you need a lot of istighfar. Try to make a habit every single day, 1,000 istighfar. The more istighfar you do, the more you come close to Allah. Then also try to, to recite a certain ayat. You know the meaning. So you will focus absolutely. Yes, that's if Prophet said, if, if you can't focus and a lot of distractions, you can look at the left side and you can say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Yes, Prophet said that. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan. But that's if, if too much distraction, you can't focus. I mean, this is from Shaitan. So you, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, left side three times. And Allah will remove that shaitan. Okay. I think we have one minute. Yes. Go on. Uh, if you combine, if you have the Sabbath, and you combine the Salah, which one is better if you make a first together? Okay, we'll talk about Nawafil in details. But just, I'll respond. If you are traveling, is it better to combine Dhuhr and Asr in the first time or in the end time? It depends to your traveling. Both is okay. So just try to set your plan. If it's better for your traveling to do it first, do it first. If late, do it late. Allahu Alam. Yes? Okay, mashallah, guys here, yeah, boys, very good imagination. Okay, so you pray fard or sunnah? Fard, why you pray fard at train? Okay, did you, st when you start your fard, you start to qibla? Okay, that's the most important. When you start in qibla, and the airplane or the train, they change or the, the boat or and whatever, that's not a problem. The only in the beginning, try to face the Qibla. Because this is something out of your control. You can't do anything. You can't every time go and move, move with, 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 the, with the ship. If any adult, yeah. Yes, you can. We'll talk about that later, inshallah. Yes? Sheikh, you know, based on what you said previously, does that mean that a person cannot lead the same salah twice? So if he came... Yeah, he can lead. The same salah twice. Okay. Can a person lead the same salah twice? It's not good. However, sometimes if it's in need, maybe he is the only knowledgeable in that village, yes. But in the normal situation, no. So Mu'adh ibn Jabal used to pray Isha with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as ma'moom, as a ma'moom. And then he went to his area and pray again as an imam. But to do imam twice, sometimes just if it's exception. Sometimes we need it. Sometimes there is no one can lead salah as some villages. And there is two jumu'ahs because of just exception, but in a normal situation, no. Now, your lessons is after the lesson. Just adults first. Because salah is not wajiba to you. It's not obligatory for you. Yes? That 
That's right. That's a mas'ala, famous mas'ala, discussion between scholars. Can we combine Asr with Jumu'ah? Why there is mas'ala and discussion? Because there is no case study in the time of the Prophet ﷺ happened like this. No at all. That's the first point. The second point, is Jumu'ah instead of Dhuhr, or it's a separate Salah in that day? That's another discussion. So that's why some scholars say, yes, you can combine. Some say no. It's along this, yeah. Naam. Yemet khilaf mashhur jiddan. Naam. Naam. As much as you can. If you can make it 100%, you, you have to try your best. How accurate qibla should be. You should try your best. Nowadays we have a lot of equipment or tools we can make it very accurate we should go for that but in the past they just try their best but in qibla if you try your best for example in the villages in my country or man they try their best if they is wrong unless it's like this 180 degrees it's okay if it's more than that they should make it again What if the space is so tight? Make the space big. <laughs> try your best. Try your best. And if it can't, try like this. If it's just like this, it's okay. Prophet said, "Ma bain al mashriqi wal maghribi qiblay." Please, this is a bit flexible. If it's a tight place, Wallahu alam. Wassalallahu ala abdi rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alhamdulillahirobbilalamin.